I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down just a hair. Uh, I hope you guys can still hear me just fine. Actually, uh, I did that the wrong way. I, you can kind of tell. I haven't done this in a while. <clears throat> but, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm, I'm just gonna play, I'm gonna be playing with the audio a lot today. Um, so normally I have stream beats, but in the intervening time while I haven't been able to stream, I have played a bit with the services that I pay for, and uh, one of those was Spotify Premium that allows me to do stream beats through Spotify that allows you to see at the bottom what's playing and everything. Unfortunately, that uh, subscription has lapsed, and uh, as a result... Um, sorry, I gotta maneuver my windows. I'm getting back in the hang of this. That's that's the point here, is that I'm getting back into the swing of things, trying to do this whole thing reasonably again. Um, ideally, I would like to get back to doing this on a regular basis, but we're gonna see how the old girl can handle it. Um, I have a new computer, uh, which I had to upgrade and then find all the assets and everything. It was a big pain in the butt. But the point is, I'm here now, and I'm hoping that this computer can handle it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little test stream from Denver to San Francisco. It's going to take about two and a half hours, give or take. I'll probably be on stream about three because there's always going to be a little bit of play with how long it takes to do a flight versus how long it's supposed to take. Um, you'll notice there's been a little bit of a change to the overlay, like up in this area and right here. Um, you'll see that there are some new bot commands. I, I haven't been doing nothing during this time. So we do have route, metar. Uh, metar, you can enter any iCal code. Uh, so like if you wanted to do um, Miami, you could just do metar uh, KMIA. And there's your metar for Miami. It's not gonna decode it, but if you ask for help, I'm happy to decode what I can. Uh, some of it, I'm, I'm not perfect with metar and I really need to study it more. But I can at least translate into, you know, winds, uh, temperature, um, winds, temperature, altimeter, which will tell you air pressure. Uh, it's your barometer. Um, sometimes I can tell the, the, the cloud cover, but that's a little harder for me. I'm not good at it. Ah, uh, anyway. So this has all been one big fluster cluck. <laughs> but we're going to get this flight started so that we can get through it and I can always talk about this stuff in the air. So we're going to go ahead and start with our preliminary pre-flight procedures. I am hoping I've gotten a bit better at this. There's a couple of things I do need to mention real quick. Is that uh, I got some gifts. And one of them is this brand new branded... Thrustmaster TCA side stick, but um, the person who gifted this to me did not stop there. They also gifted me, and that's not going to work because that's intertwined with my key lights. Anyway, um, they also included the throttle quadrant and the full captain pack which has the flap selector parking brake uh uh rudder rudder trim uh speed brake gear selector and auto brake selector and i cannot explain how glad i am that this person did this i am i am so beyond grateful it was so far above and beyond the call of duty to do that um and i am absolutely floored by the generosity this is this is almost a 300 dollars pack of equipment for flying um 
and and that is it, it has brought me to a point where i came back from, i i almost hadn't not just not streamed but for a while i hadn't even flown um just because it's such a pain uh the the old flight stick that i had was a thrustmaster t flight hotus x which it operates off of one usb for both flight stick and throttle quadrant so they were bound together um they were set up so that the flight stick is always on the right and the throttle quadrant on the left which doesn't make sense because as you can see i am in the a320 and in the captain's seat your flight stick is going to be on the left and your throttles are going to be on the right and that's true in almost any airliner i actually i think it is every airliner is like that um <clears throat> The, the uh, throttle quadrant is always going to be in the middle of the cockpit. And your if you have a yoke, it's going to be directly in front of you. If you have a stick, it's going to be on the side. If it's on the side, it's going to be on the outside. So captain, always on the left. First officer, always on the right. I'm going to need to turn down. I'm spiking really bad. Um, <clears throat> so anyway... This comes, as you can tell, separately, um, and each piece can be set up wherever you want. That's fantastic. Uh, now the only, like, straight SIM hardware that I really would probably like is to upgrade from the, uh, what do I have, SciTech Pro Flight rudder pedals to the Thrustmaster Pendulars, and I'll be good as far as that's concerned. Um... <clears throat> One thing I do need to real quick um, get started is SimBridge. I may or may not use it. Actually, I think I am going to need to use it. I need to turn on SimBridge. All right. So SimBridge is up and running. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and start our procedures and get this bird in the air. How about that? Especially since uh, our windows are icing up. Uh, so let's get batteries one and two on. Ground control recorder on external power can come on fuel pumps are all off and now we get to show some of the new features of the flyby wire a320 let me tell you i love this thing um it is free you just have to download it from flybywiresimulations.com uh they have an installer you, all you do is you just click install i'm using the stable 0.9.1 uh and here's the thing, this is some of the cool stuff. Once you've set it up, you, you, you so you come in here and you go to, I think it's Atsu. And yeah, so you'll put in your SimBrief user ID. You can put in mine if you want, it's just gonna allow you to pull my last, uh, my last uh, flight plan. It's not gonna give you anything that you need. So uh, yeah, anyway. So once you do that, you can just come here and after you use SimBrief to make your flight plan, you just go import data from SimBrief. Cool. That's what I'm going to fly. From Denver to San Francisco, it's pulling all this data. Actually, it's pulling this data from VATSIM. VATSIM is pulling it from the FAA. <coughs> but, um... So the point is that uh, it's coming from the a FAA via SimBrief. Or by, via uh, VATSIM. Because I am doing... I have done one flight on that. <laughs> um, so it also does cool shit like I can just look at my Simbri flight plan. And here I can uh, connect our jet bridge, bring our fuel truck, uh, our baggage truck, and our GPU should be here already, but it's not. I don't know why. Uh, but I can go to fuel. And I'm going to fill the block fuel how much I need. So it's going to take six minutes to refuel the plane. We're going to start that. And then loading payload. Hey, look at this. Here's that button again. Huh, that looks familiar. I'm going to click that. Oh, look. That's all of the data from my flight plan. I can show you where this is in my flight plan. But it's so cool that I can just click the button and then start it. And they're going to start boarding. You can see how this is starting to light up you can see and it's taking time to actually board the plane 
And I think that that's just bizarrely cool. Um, it's also like loading the cargo progressively. Uh, it's also got this calculator here to, you know, do top of descent calculations and landing calculations. This one's a little more sophisticated than, than I'm quite prepared to use so far. I think I've gotten it to work one time, and at that point I was on the ground. <laughs> but uh, the point is, it's here, and it's it's fantastic. Uh, it can interface with Navigraph. Obviously, I, I actually don't have a Navigraph subscription. I want one very, very badly. Um, so the, it even simulates failures. I love this plane so much. Anyway, so we've got our fuel is loading. I'm not going to start the APU quite yet, even though I really should because our windows are all icing over pretty badly. Uh, now, normally uh, we would go through a de-icing stage because the hull of the plane is not heated and uh, it's going to ice, but... There's nothing I can do about that. Uh, that's not simulated in the game, and I don't think it has any actual effect. So we're going to set up our uh, lights a little bit. And I'm going to bring up mostly my backlights. I don't like using floodlights. Uh, it ruins my night vision. Which is weird, because I'm using like these floodlights here. But that's in the real world, not in the sim. And that's not something I usually have to deal with. All right, so we check and make sure our flaps are retracted. Some of this you're not going to really be able to see. I can I can pan the camera down and you can see right uh, right here where my flaps are. Um, but I'm actually looking down on my uh, my HOTUS. Speed brake is retracted. Uh, probe and window. I don't know why it's been doing this. That's that's weird behavior. I'll also show some other weird behavior, but that's stuff that they're aware of and they're working on fixing. No, no. I hate that part of MS MFS. If I could get rid of one thing, it's this little doohickey here. I hate it. Um, okay, we don't have the APU bleed on, so that's not going to work. Packs are not going to be fully configured yet. Uh, but we can make sure that the crossfeed is on auto. We can make sure that our temps are a little higher. These aren't related to the function of the plane, but realistically, we would do that. Uh, generator 1 and 2 fault light is on, on the electrical panel. Uh, all other lights are off, and the ventilation panel lights are off. So now we can start working on our pre-flight procedures. We're going to start with our adheres. Adhere 1 can come on. Now we're going to wait for it to test. This is something I see a lot of people skipping. Um, and unless you have a failure going on, it's not going to matter. But I don't want to get used to doing things wrong. Because in the off chance that I ever get the opportunity to fly an actual A320 that might actually have a failure, I want to be in the habit of actually going through these tests, seeing it test the battery connection, and seeing it pass. And a lot of people will just hit all three, three of these at once. Technically, it'll tell you if all of them passed. It won't tell you which one has failed if there is a failure. At least that's my understanding. All right, so that's everything. Uh, strobe lights can come to auto. And we're going to turn on our wing and our nav and logo lights. I'm not going to turn on our seatbelt light quite yet. This is... this. There are some things in my uh, checklist that I kind of need to move. Like seatbelt lights, it doesn't make sense to illuminate those until people have boarded the plane. Um, but turning on the other internal lights is valuable. Landing elevation is set to auto. Pack flow for today. Yeah, we're real full, so I'm going to go with high. I'm not going to turn on the fuel pumps because we're not turning on the engines yet. Radios in this start on, but uh, I'm not sure why. I would I would rather they started off. 
So now we get to play around with the make do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys here and I'm going to turn this up. And then I'm going to actually use uh, Simbridge. And what this allows me to do is you'll see me picking up my tablet here. And what I'm going to do with this tablet is as soon as it works. Come on. Simbridge, what are you doing? Where's my Simbridge? <laughs> I think maybe under Sim Options. Yeah, here we are, Simbridge. There we go. Okay. See that little notification there? Mick do connected. See, what that means is I get to do this. And if I can get this in the right spot, you can see I've got the Mick do <laughs> here in my hands. So we're gonna go um, <clears throat> first to the data page. Now, normally we would check the GPS monitor. Uh, I have no idea if this is correct because um, I don't have the GPS coordinates of Denver on me. Uh, but we're going to go here and we're gonna go KDEN to KSFO. So KDEN slash KSFO. Oh, and I'm going to hit this uh, line select key right here next to from to. And then my alternate today, which I can tell by looking right over here on the main page, my alternate is KSMF. And that's going to go there in the alternate. I, I forgot to move you guys back over here. Um, <clears throat> this is actually decently hard to do, um, because <laughs> I need to keep looking back over here and you guys need to see that because that's where the cool stuff is happening. So our flight number is Frontier 665, that's FFT, uh, 665. <clears throat> so what you're seeing here is I put that down here in the scratch pad and then I hit the line select next to flight number and you'll see that fill in. Which means good things, because the other night the uh, the servers for this were having some DNS errors. Uh, so today's cost index, which you'll see right here, is five. It's a very expensive flight. Our flight level is 380. And I absolutely typed that backwards. Okay, so now we're going to go to wind, and we're gonna request our climb wind and our cruise wind. Not gonna worry about descent wind until we get there because that's two and a half hours away. I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, let's go to flight plan. So we're going to be, this is where I need my routing here. We're gonna be departing from runway zero eight. via the Cores 6 departure. And we are going to Voaxa, so that's our transition. And then from Voaxa... We're going via the Quebec 136 Airway to Rumps. <laughs> if I could spell. Then we're going direct to Oscar Alpha Lima. Hmm. 
I don't like that there's not a disconnect in here. Uh, next waypoint is going to be Oscar Alpha Lima. Indirect Inyoi. see me pulling this information from right here on our route you can also hit exclamation point root in chat you will see it up there uh the only mistake in there is that for some reason sim brief or uh i'm sorry sim toolkit pro loves to put the uh for some reason it loves to put the um sid and star as a waypoint i have no idea why <clears throat> so we're going to insert that all the way down to Inyoi. And then we're going to do a arrival for ILS 128 left in San Francisco. And we're coming in via the Diamond 5. Diamond 5 star. And are we via? No via. But we are transition from Inyoi. So I'm just going to glance over this real quick. Why do I have Inyoi twice? So I'm going to clear this Inyoi. All right. Oh, good. And we got the proper discontinuity now that we should have had in the beginning. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys where we're at. So we're going to switch to the plan mode. Dial that out a little bit. So this here is the, uh, that's arrival. Why are we still looking at the arrival? Here we are. This here is the runway we're going to be departing to the east. And it's going to disconnect a little bit because I have a manual there. So I need to climb for one nautical mile. But then we go to the pile, which I want to. So we're going to climb and then we're going to turn around. Cool. Um, that is such a weird departure. Normally we would get vectors that would turn us around. And I'm doing this on the wrong side. Uh, we would get vectors that would turn us around and get us back onto that waypoint. But, um, I don't have ATC to vector me. So I'll kind of build my own vectors. Um, <clears throat> so now we're going to look at... We're going to tab our way through these waypoints and make sure that everything makes sense. Going to the southwest here, almost exclusively southwest. This is actually a really straight flight, surprisingly. So now let's zoom in a little bit because we're getting close to our arrival. And it's going to bring us in southwest to Archie. And then I want to make sure that that's a good connection. Okay, so then we will direct to He-Man, which will get us on track to arrive at San Francisco. That's how the plan should look. And uh, there are a lot of um, there's a lot of tutorials that I've seen on the flight of this plane that would tell you to clear the discontinuity here. That is a very bad idea. Don't do it. Um, this plane. In particular, at least, I don't know if this is normal.
All right, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so I've seen this thing go absolutely batshit squirrely um, when you start deleting discontinuities. I mean, less discontinuities and more manuals. It just has no idea what it's supposed to be doing. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go and make sure that they just told me what they told me they did, which, okay, everything is loaded, fuel is loaded. So we're going to dismiss the baggage truck and the jet bridge and the fuel truck. All right, so that's our flight plan done. We're gonna go back to init B. And then this calculates our zero fuel weight and our center of gravity for us. All I do is click the line select key. It tells me what the, those numbers are, puts it into the scratch pad, and I just click it again. Fuel, on the other hand, I have to actually pull off of here. So we are going to have 69.06. So I'm just going to say 6.9. And then it's going to take a minute to calculate. Not that long of a minute. There it goes. So we see here we have almost an hour of extra time. That's perfectly fine. So we're going to move on to performance. We are going to do a flaps one takeoff because we are not so heavy that we're going to need the full runway at Denver to take off. Uh, our flex temp I'm going to put as low as possible, 60. Um, trans out in the United States is always 18,000. Then V1, this is the speed at which we can no longer abort our takeoff, is 134 knots. V rotate is going to be 135. So immediately after that, we start taking off, regardless of anything. Um, once 134 happens, we're flying. We may not fly for long, but we are flying. V2, our safe climb speed is 139. And it looks like our throttle reduction altitude is going to be 68.50. Perfect. All right. So that should be everything taken care of there. Perfect. So now I'm going to set this down because I do not need my mic do for a little bit. All right. So. Let's start getting this bitch started, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and turn on seatbelts. Then we're going to check the APU fire test. Sounds good to me. So let's go ahead and hit that master switch. I'm going to look down here for the flap open message. Should take about three to five seconds. It just means that it can breathe air. And we're gonna turn that on. It's gonna start rising my uh, rotation and my exhaust gas, my exhaust temperature starts rising almost immediately. Once that's started, we can turn on our APU bleed so that we can start our main engines based off of that. I don't know why it's opening this back up. It's doing that a lot today. Not just today. Uh, it's been since the last update. But I don't think that that's anything wrong with the development of the craft. Uh, the Fly-By-Wire team is absolutely fantastic. I love them. Um, they have always been there to help anytime I needed issues solved. All right, looks like our APU is available. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the APU bleed. Our packs are now all white and everything is off. Cross bleed is set to auto. You can see that right here. And now we're going to, I've already turned the seatbelt lights on. So let's get on the fuel pumps. And then we're going to test our engine. Uh, fire suppression systems. All right. So now getting ready for pushback. We need to make sure our altimeter is set. So let's look here. Our altimeter today should be 2958. That's going to be way, 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 way down. 2958. 
So our flight directors are both on. You can see these right here, these little green lights here. FCU speed and heading are managed. Our FCU altitude. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I decided to do this flight and this uh, stream last second. So I have not had any opportunity to brief the charts. So because I haven't had a chance to brief the charts, I'm not going to fly by them. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clear ourselves up to 38,000 because I am flying offline. So there's no traffic to worry about. And uh, the Airbus will determine our constraints and limit us to those constraints. So I'm not going to second guess it. Um, but that's purely because this, this is all just about seeing if my computer can handle the flight. It has nothing to do with flying the plane accurately. Okay. Uh, oh, and while we're sitting here, how about we turn on our all of our anti-ice because we we need it badly um this is going to need a few minutes to to de-ice uh so anti-skid nose wheel steering is on you can see that right here uh the switching panel down here is all normal we're going to set our transponder and set it to standby and then we're going to turn our beacon And then we're going to check and make sure that those slides are all armed. We're going to check here and make sure that all of our services are disconnected. We've still got ground power. We'll go ahead and turn that off. And then we can dismiss it. By the way, if you see these... Um, if you see these these areas where I'm zooming weirdly, it's probably because I'm actually off the uh, screen scrolling either my chat or my uh, checklist. And just Microsoft Flight thinks that it's extremely important all the time. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to I'm going to mess with this volume a minute while I am waiting for uh Let's see, where's my filters? While I'm waiting for this, I'm gonna turn down my game just a little bit because I feel like I'm peaking awfully hard and I really don't wanna be doing that. Um, I think that probably feels a little better. But if anybody here if, if anybody is here, please let me know um, what you think. Um, that is definitely making me peek into the red a lot less. But I am kind of bombastic. I do tend to, to get quite loud. So um, let me know if I'm hurting anybody's ears. All right, so let's go ahead and plan our pushback. Now, let me, uh, I do need to at least check this. Now let's connect that to MFS. I'm in Denver, so we'll figure it out. Okay, there we go. So we are departing 08. <sighs> Sim toolkit, please. Don't fight me. All right, so we're departing 08. So we are going to push back tail left and get on the Charlie 5. And we're gonna go Charlie 5 Lima. Actually, let's go Charlie 5 Mike. Charlie 5 Mike, runway 08. So we're going to 
push back. That's gonna be our pushback. So we're gonna go ahead and request our pushback. You can see the, the pushback tug coming in here. Um, you can kind of see it. <laughs> you can't really tell with the windows iced up the way they are. But, uh, wow, I feel so weird not being able to see OBS. <laughs> you can tell I haven't done this in a while. I apologize, everybody. Um, I really wish that uh, I had done this more recently so I could be a little more on top of things and less behind them. Is it currently lifting me or has it already lifted me? Because I did see release parking brake flash. So right now I'm just keeping, okay, so their parking brake became bright yellow, so we're gonna go ahead and release our parking brake. And then we're going to start our engine start procedures. Engine mode is gonna go to ignition. And we're gonna start engine two. Everything's gonna shut down for a second while, uh, while that second engine is starting. And you'll see this this will start the uh, the screens clearing much much faster. I think I may need to turn these up. Where are you? There you are. The cam brightness needs to come up. This is purely because my um, my key lights are ruining my night vision. So I can't see as well as I should be able to in this lighting. Because like I said, normally in a flight like this, I would be flying um, with no lights, just my overhead, um, which is not all that strong. But with these key lights blasting in my face, I can't see. All right, engine two is started and stable. We're going to start engine one. By the way, don't worry about that. If you ever hear that on a real plane, you will absolutely hear that on an Airbus. I mean, probably on everything, but uh, that's a little thing called the power transfer unit. What it's doing is um, basically everything on the airliner runs off of pneumatic pressure, which is generated by the engines. So obviously you have to start one engine before the other engine. Because of that, in order to drive all of the hydraulic systems at once and not expose the system to a loss of pressure so that a loss of pressure in any of the hydraulic systems would result in all of them failing. Instead, it has a power transfer unit. What this is, is basically just a little uh, turbine where the pressure flowing on one side causes the turbine to spin, which pushes pressure in the other side without actually making the hydraulic fluids exchange. And that's what you're hearing when that second engine is starting up is the power transfer unit. All right, so I'm gonna turn off my uh, igniters. My engine is started. We're gonna turn off our AP bleed. I'm gonna, what, the, no, that just gets closed, go away. Um, <laughs> Turn off our APU bleed. We're gonna arm our ground spoilers, which I, ironically, this is my one complaint about the TCA. Uh, I can't do that on my throttle quadrant. I could not tell you why. Flaps are gonna set for takeoff. That's position one. Uh, we're not gonna worry about pitch trim for many reasons, uh, including that I don't know how to calculate it and uh, this one doesn't do it for me. Uh, all of my anti-ice is on. APU master can come off. We've already checked our door slides. So we're ready to prepare ourselves for taxi. Nose light is going to go to taxi. Uh, we're going to start our elapsed time. 
gonna real quick check our flight controls. Full left, I'm looking down here in the bottom right hand corner. Full right, full up, full down, rudder left, rudder right. All right, and that is our flight controls checked. Uh, our FMA is in nav and climb. Terrain on ND is inoperable. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and release our parking brake. And I'm gonna apply a little forward pressure to get us to break away. And then I'm gonna follow the taxi line that I can't see because uh, the snow has covered everything. But I am following this on my uh, SIM toolkit. So um, I also can't see because of the ice, but uh, we're gonna do our best. So I'm guessing there's this line here that doesn't seem to match up with contours in the ground. And I think that this is what I'm supposed to actually be following. But it should normally be yellow, but this, this has to do with the whole snow situation. Yeah, this looks like it's it's going where I need it to go. Yeah, buddy, okay, we're following it. All right, so this is Charlie 5. Again, I would be much more vigilant if I was on VATSIM or some other online service like PauseCon, but I'm not. So I'm just gonna drive the plane. Um, right now I've got my hands on the controls, um, which is, I don't actually need my hand on the flight stick right now because the steering on the ground is done with the rudders. It's not actually the rudder doing it. Um, there's a there's a tiller in the actual cockpit, but since I don't have a tiller to use, um, I'm just using my rudder pedals and uh, making sure it's disconnected, which is not something I'm actually making sure of. It's just um, it's supposed to be. I think it's actually not. I, I think my rudder is probably deflecting. But it's not hurting anything, so I don't care. Okay, so this will be Lima on the left. We're going to cross this one, take the next left on Mike. And here we are. Trying to just be smooth and slow. All right, so we need to check our brakes a little. Just to make sure they're working. Yeah, okay, we're decelerating. All right, so we are going to call the purser. We're going to set our auto brakes to max. Now there is a little bit of an issue that we may see here. And that is, if you look at the FMA here, you'll see this enunciator saying that my auto brake is at max. But if I show that, if, if I show that button and then I right click and drag and it goes off, the enunciator turns off. Now, having done nothing else, I can pan over and you see it turns back on. I have no idea why. Uh, I have reported the issue to Fly-By-Wire. Come on. Come on, break away. I 
I did not intend to actually stop in the middle of the taxiway. There we go. Come on. Break away. I need you to move, plane. Not just think about moving. Actually move. I should be going way faster than this with the throttle that I've been using, but... Here we go. Now we're moving. Now we're moving. Okay, so as we're approaching, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this to TARA. Technically, I shouldn't have done that unless the, um, unless the Notams told me to. Woo! What is going on with the leveling here? That, that's not appropriate. I don't know why it's doing this. There's got to be something with the default scenery. slow down because we're doing 30 knots and that is our maximum at least in the US and I don't want to be anywhere near my maximum as I come here to the runway we're going to go ahead and light up Cycle our auto brakes. Okay. Stop here, ready to take off. I just want to make sure that I get this started. Okay, let's go throttles to 50%. And stable. Flex set. Down All right, indicated airspeed is alive. Sixty knots. Eighty knots. our back pressure. V1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Ooh. And a little bit of a tail gust there. thing we're going to do real quick. Is we're going to go direct. To color. We're going to turn on our autopilot. Okay, it doesn't want to. So we are going to nose down to get some speed. Ooh. Don't sink. Don't sink. Okay, okay, okay. Don't sink. Don't sink. Why? Don't sink. Don't sink. Don't sink. 
What is going on? Plane. Would you like to explain yourself? Don't worry, don't worry. We're fine. We're just having to balance how much we're turning. This is absolutely not normal, folks, by the way. I swear to God, I'm better than this. I've done probably 30 flights in the last week, and I have not had this happen in a single one of them. I don't know why my speed is set so low. Um, speed should absolutely be higher. I'm going to set flaps too. Warning lights. Ice detected. Well, there's nothing I can really do about that, Padre. I hate to tell you. All right, let's turn on our autopilot. Okay, so it's going to try and match a little better. No, no, you're doing the thing. Hold on. Direct to... Polly. Just there we go. Level to climb. Here we go. Okay. Things are back under control, folks. We're not gonna die. <laughs> I think that probably had to do with how much ice was on the hull. Um... There was just nothing I could do. Uh, there's there's no anti-ice systems in the game. So there's just nothing I can do to fix that, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to zoom this out a little bit. All right, so now that I don't need this, I can swap back to OBS. New flight predictions have been reset. That's right, there is a system we will do. Uh, if you want to predict what my landing rate will be, type exclamation point predict. Um, I will tell you now, I'm not great, but I'm not terrible. I'm gonna stand up real quick because uh, my hip is killing me. I'm gonna go ahead and retract our, slat, our flaps real quick. I should probably finish my procedures here. <laughs> I'm getting distracted by the fact that I have stream going. Um, and so I'm not doing all of my procedures like I should be. Uh, okay, flaps are down. Engine mode, is it normal? Anti-ice is definitely needed. And we are doing that. We will be waiting for 18,000 for the transition altitude. Um, all right, so we are already set for 38,000 feet. We should see no more problems. This is all stuff that I'm used to now. Uh, landing lights stay on until 10,000, which we are just about to cross. So we're gonna go ahead and turn those bitches off. And now that everybody has had a chance to scream and fear for their lives, I'm gonna turn off our um, seat belts. Speaking of turning off your seat belts, I'm gonna stand up for real quick and stretch because uh, that is important to your health. Uh, never forget to stretch. Um, you don't really do that much in the cockpit, but the chairs are made specifically to be ergonomic so that you maintain most of that. I, however, need to stand up in order to maintain my posture and health especially because uh, I tend to rest pretty much all of my weight on one hip and it gets quite painful part of it is because this chair is absolutely falling apart <laughs> I, and, and I don't say that like trying to uh, coach people to give me anything. Uh, it still functions. I'm just... I'm just explaining 
why uh, you may see me get up, stretch, move around several times throughout the flight. Uh, sitting is uncomfortable. Humans are not made to, to sit for that long. Um, so as I may have mentioned before, uh, there is an issue with this that I have been noticing. Uh, I don't think anybody else has reported it, but it's exclusively with using right click to pan around the cockpit. And if you pan these buttons off of the screen, the enunciator turns off and I'm not sure if it actually like triggers the auto brake. Um, but I am certain that uh, it turns off the enunciator here on the FMA. So I have reported that. I'm sure they'll probably say something about it. And just so y'all know, uh, when you're making your landing rate predictions, my last two landing rates, <laughs> this is so wild, uh, were 300 and 132. So, your guess is as good as mine. Um, it's it's hard to, to say where I'm going to come in. I can say that the highest that I've seen is 420. Um, that was a concerning landing. Uh, 1.27 Gs. I'm, I'm pretty sure my... Uh, my flight crew would be quite upset with me. I may have given some people, um, not quite concussions, but, you know, jostled their noggin a bit, so to speak. We're coming up on 18,000 feet. When we get there, we're going to switch over to uh, standard barometric pressure and transition over into flight levels. But we are still going to head up to 38,000 feet. So 18,000, we're going to switch over to standard barometric pressure and on our standby compass or standby uh, VSI as well. All right. So now for the most part, I'm not going to say completely, but for the most part, we're done until approach, which I should probably use this time to familiarize myself with the route. However, that said, not gonna. Um, instead, I'm gonna use this little bit of time to make a few announcements. Um, somewhere. I don't know where I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I should have prepared for this, but I didn't. All right, so our anti-ice is still on, uh, but there is definitely ice on the plane. Let's go ahead and grab some external views, and I'm sorry if these blow out your ears. Oh! Oh, dear. Okay. That's that's a sound. Let me find my OBS. So that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it's definitely being caught by my microphone, which means I need to turn this down. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, 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 uh. There we go. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, because that's not too loud for you in your speakers, but it was being picked up by my microphone, which I really need to fix. All right, so we are doing a departure out of Denver, which means we are much higher than we look. I think this is one of the reasons why in Europe they have different transitional altitudes based on, probably based on something. I don't know what that something is, but it's probably something. In any case, we're gonna jump back in the cockpit and I'm gonna turn over to the status page and see that everything is normal. So it looks like we had about a two minute, no. No, no, no. Eight minutes. Eight minutes of taxi. 
Uh, some of that was probably because of waiting for things, explaining things to you guys. And that one embarrassing crossing on the taxiway where we basically stopped moving. That's probably what those were. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. I don't need that on my window. And I'm gonna turn this up very slightly. Okay. I don't think there is anybody on for me to announce to. Just bouncing around my Discord, seeing if there's anybody to mention to. Uh, and I don't think that there is. So I'm just gonna do a quick flight. I don't think anyone is watching. And at this point, I kind of hope nobody is watching because I have made so many, so many critical errors. Um, but I am hoping to get it right. Uh, <laughs> let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, I want to get back into this uh, ice not detector. Okay, we're too high now. So we can turn off our anti-ice and now this is just like any other flight so yeah um right at this moment i'm kind of hoping that we don't what the hell is this okay. i was gonna say what are we talking about on a uh what is this oc remix okay we're skipping this. By the way, I just want to point out, Sonic has had some fire soundtracks. I, uh, I'm, I can't say all the games are good, but the soundtracks are amazing. Kind of the same way with Mega Man. A lot of the Mega Man games are hit and miss. Uh, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna say it here. So far, not a big fan of the Blue Bar. I, I did. I, I loved the Mega Man X series. Not a big fan of, of Mega Man OG. And I hate Legends. We don't talk about Legends. Legends doesn't exist here. Um, <laughs> I am watching, and I, I, I am a big fan of uh, Mega Man X Corrupted, which is a fan-made Mega Man X that is up and coming. Uh, let's see. Are, is is that accurate? That doesn't seem accurate. Hold up. What's my what's my current altitude? Twenty nine thousand, and that still says twenty seven. Oh, it's showing my true altitude. Right, 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 right. I got gotcha. you. Just like it's showing my heading, uh, my bearing, not my heading. Um. But my speed should be not correct either. Oh no, yes it is. Okay, it's showing my true airspeed. Right here. It's showing this and my heading. Wait, why are you on TA only? Hold up. There we go. T-A-R-A. <sighs> okay, so we're at 255 and it's showing 266. Seven. It's showing 267. Where are you getting this heading from, Sim Toolkit? See, when I'm flying offline, I'm paying attention to the flight. I'm playing it paying attention to my engines, my, my instruments. Uh, I'm looking at my charts and verifying my route as I fly. I'm not paying attention to where these tools are. Um, Tub! Tub, what are you doing, man? Uh, <laughs> I'm noticing, so I'm doing a test stream. I, I haven't actually streamed all this stuff in a long time. I'm basically stress testing my PC. Uh, I used to do this all the time, and um, unfortunately my 1080 Ti uh, went tits up. Midstream! Or no, it was, it was uh, 40 minutes after stream. The whole computer died. My GPU was dead. Um, 
And this was in 2021. So GPU prices were absolutely ludicrous. There was no way I was replacing it. Yeah. Um, I, I It killed me. And then I was like, okay, I'll just buy a new PC to get the video card. Well, it turned out that I found a new PC whose specs for most everything was better. Except for the RAM. It had half the RAM, which is absolutely necessary. It's absolutely mission critical for both Flight Simulator and for OBS. So I said, okay, I'm going to have to... So I'll get this one. I'll transfer the RAM out of my old PC. Um, that way I'll have the same amount of RAM. I'll have a better processor. I'll have a 3060 instead of a 1080 Ti. Um, which it turns out they're about equal as far as processing power. Um... So anyway, yeah, um, then I get, I get it home, I take it apart, I swap the RAM. RAM's not compatible. So it took me some time to save up some money without having any income from stream, without having any um, extra income from my work. I had to do all of my work slower because I didn't have the RAM to, because I do graphic design. So, um... Anything that slows down my computer slows down my work. Unfortunately, that means everything slowed down, so everything got less money, so it took me way longer than I anticipated to be able to get the new RAM, especially because RAM prices were absolutely astronomical. Um, I did eventually get them, get them in, but uh, they're a slightly slower RAM, and they're not a name brand where what was in my old PC was. So, without the ability to move the processors between boards, I just had to kind of guess and hope that this was going to work. Um, right now, I'm hoping that my PC is not overheating <laughs> because Microsoft Flight Simulator is gorgeous, but um, the stress of it and the stress of streaming it I'm hoping it doesn't overwhelm my computer. Right now at cruise, it should be pretty much okay. Because we're not looking at airports or anything. Um, we don't even have much light. So it's really just the, the, the ground. That's it. Uh, I haven't even... As you can see, I haven't even installed my liveries yet. Um... I've been doing a lot of flying recently, but what I haven't been doing is streaming it. So I do know that it can handle the simulator, but it is choking a little bit on the Simulator Plus OBS. Um, but if you guys are having a positive experience, then I think it's handling it okay. Um, I'll have to check and see where my bottleneck is because I would like to squeeze a little more performance in. Uh, looks like my bottleneck is nothing. And I don't know why. So you can see that this is very choppy and jumpy. Um... But my CPU is at about 60, 65%. Memory is at 53%. GPU is at a, under 50%. So I don't know. Uh, your GPU has been on life support. Somehow find, found a 4090 and had the money. So fuck it. I uh, realize you have a three-year-old PSU. Good luck. <laughs> you, you need a bio generator to power that 4090 by itself. <laughs> Uh, it's strong enough, but it's on the back end of its life. And if you've ever had a PSU go out, you know, it's usually a spectacular set. Yeah. Um, I was actually lucky when mine went out, which I say lucky, but, um, lucky isn't quite the word because what, so what happened? So what happened was, um, I was living in an apartment building and it was summer. And this was like the third summer in the row where this happened. Um, very beginning of summer, AC works fine. A week later, stops working. We call the office. They tell us that they'll fix it. They send a guy out. 
and it starts to kind of work for a day and then nothing. And we'd wait because we thought it was just a fluke that they hadn't sent anyone out. And then, you know, a couple weeks later when it's still not working, we're like, hey, you know, we called. Turns out what had happened was the guy that they were calling, instead of putting parts in the system to fix it, he was just coming out and gassing it up with, with new Freon. Which, if there's a leak, which there was, would then cause the system to freeze up and no cold air. Um, so eventually they said, okay, look, guys, we're going to replace the entire unit. We're, we're, we're pulling the old unit off of the top of the building and we're going to put an entire new unit in there. We're not going to screw with any more parts. We have put too much money into trying to fix it. Let's just replace it. I said, cool. All right. So we know what's going on. And then months went by, nothing happened. Well, it turns out what happened was they had no idea, but this guy had come, pulled the machine off of the roof, cashed their check, sold the unit and booked it. He took their money and bolted. Now this means that this was in a really bad summer. My house was probably, my apartment was probably 90 plus degrees almost all day. I was having to like lay in bed with a sheet soaked in water over me just to keep myself cool. Um, and that's not counting my computer or anything else. Um, hey, we just reached cruise. So it's probably about to interrupt me. Yeah, that's a really contractor thing to do and not the good contractor kind because like my uncle is a contractor. And he does great work. He refuses to do any shortcuts like that. Uh, but this guy just took the money and booked it. And because of that, I overheated my motherboard and my PSU. And I had some capacitors that bulged and popped on my motherboard. My PSU died, but it did nothing spectacular. It just melted. Um, I think that was it that was actually wrong, but because I was replacing the motherboard, I basically had to replace the CPU anyway. And realistically, at that time, the CPU was not that big of a difference in price. Well, it didn't, like, explode. They bulged. They, they, they failed internally. They didn't explode. So, um, I don't know... It was probably just just purely the heat. Um, they just overheated and they bulged and they died. Uh, it didn't help that this was the same time. I think I've posted some pictures in the Final Fantasy forum on Cards Discord. Um, which I should probably I should probably do a couple shout outs. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, I don't need to shout this out for you, but I'm going to put it on my channel anyway. Uh, so in Cards Discord, I think I posted some pictures of my Final Fantasy around the release of Stormblood. Uh, you're not the big, you're not the biggest AMD fan, but you appreciate them using their sockets to their full extent. Yes, I have for a long time. I stuck with AMD. I liked it. I'm currently using an AMD Ryzen five. Uh, just to be clear, but. The thing is, unless you're going to the extremes, unless you are doing a high-end PC, the quality structure of the two is pretty similar. I mean, I've heard a lot of people talk a lot of shit about AMD, but I've never had a problem with any of my AMD products. And everyone that I've been able to question about it, they tell me that they have an AMD product problem, but it's never their problem. It's always, I heard it from, or I got it from. Well, if that's where, if, if you don't have any firsthand information and it's not like I heard it from my sister or my uncle or my father or my friend, it's always like, I heard it from this person who heard it from that person, or I got it from this tech site. Well, yeah, of course you're not going to get great reviews from like a, t a tech site on a thing that is deliberately made so that it's 
profit margin is smaller. Like that's that's AMD's business strategy is to is to prioritize a small profit margin and high volume sales in the mid and low end. They don't compete at the high end, or at least they didn't until Threadripper. Um, now they kind of are. I'm not an expert in the field, by the way. I mean, take this with a grain of salt. I, all I can say is works on my machine. <laughs> like that's the extent of my knowledge. Um, but yeah, uh, I've never had an issue with any of my AMD products, but I do prefer if I'm getting up towards the upper end, like I'm having to try and do here. Um, if I'm heading towards that upper end, I do prefer Intel because they are higher quality and because they will go into the upper end more efficiently than AMD. And their product support is better. I will also give them that. Now, completely flip the scripts on AMD in uh, GPUs. I don't really care for AMD's GPUs. I used to. That's because they were cheap. Uh, you could get the same specs cheaper, but their their drivers weren't as good. Their um, their, their drivers aren't good. Their products themselves are not particularly stable. I'm not a big fan of their... I've never had a problem with any of the ones that I had. Which, you know, is kind of the opposite of me with Intel. I, you know, or not Intel, NVIDIA. My my 1080, obviously, like I said, exploded. But, well, I, it didn't explode. I still have it. Because it's a gorgeous piece of engineering. I love the... I, I loved it. It worked for years. I, I, I think I had that... GPU for like, I don't know, seven or eight years. I don't buy Intel pro processors since they forced BIOS on my workstation that removed my fundamental ability to overclock. Yeah, yeah. Um, not just the BIOS. Uh, you know that they, they also have, uh, especially on workstations, like business and stuff, um, they a lot of times have a function on the um on the motherboard and on the chip we'll have something that interfaces to basically tell your computer or tell the tell the chip to partner with that motherboard and it will not function neither motherboard nor chip will function separately ever again and that is absolute bananas to me I, I I feel like that should be illegal. Um, kind of the same way that I think that, uh, like with the, what is it, the, the BMW, I want to say. And um, I think they're working on doing it with the Tesla as well, where like they include heated seats in every car, but you have to pay a subscription to turn it on. And I'm like, look, I can understand maybe if there's a control system that you have that works really well that you want to make people licensed to use, but if they figure out how to just operate a control, like if they have a manual control somewhere and turn it on, you've got no protection. Like they, they, can, they can do that because you sold them the product regardless of the fact, like the product that you sold them contained it. Regardless of the fact that you don't tell them they can turn it on, you gave them the thing, if they turn it on without your help, you've got no recourse. But apparently they're pushing some legislation trying to make that protected. And I think it's absolutely insane. Um, I'm a big fan of right to repair. And if you sell me a product and it contains something, it's mine. You don't get to touch it anymore. You don't get to limit it, nothing. I'm still mad because of Games for Windows Live because I bought Microsoft Flight uh for for windows games for windows live uh it was an absolute dog shit simulator but it looked better than fsx and it was cheaper than x-plane so it was something that got me through the day but i had even bought expansion packs to to give me detailed areas around hawaii to fly and some more stuff to do 
and then games for windows live went down and suddenly their authentication servers are down because it doesn't exist anymore and i can't play the game the game just disappeared i can't play it anymore i bought the game and i bought the dlc but i can't use either one but yeah um that is absolute horse shit and they can in fact fuck right off they can fuck all the way off I just want to look here real quick. Where's my first restriction is diamond at 270. So I want to get my calculator open here real quick. And we're going to do our descent calculation, sync our current altitude, and we're going to go to 270. So 35 from diamond. So we're going to go to our progress page. I need to make sure I'm spelling that right because I don't think I am. I'm absolutely not. I don't know why it thinks there's two diamonds, but uh, there's there's not. We need to know 35 knots or 35 nautical miles before descent there. But yeah, if Steam goes, Gavin will be a hunted man. People realize that they just have a lifetime lease. Yes, exactly. That is the thing that drives me crazy. I have never leased anything. I don't want to lease anything. I think that leases are scams. I think. Um, you should never pay for something you're never going to get unless you have no other options. So like, um, you know, living in an apartment, you don't really have a choice. It's not that easy or cheap to buy a house, right? And yes, you're never going to get that apartment. You're going to keep paying into it. You're going to pay into it forever. The payments will never stop. And that's a shame. But it's the only way you can afford it. And you have to live somewhere. So cool, but car, if you have any way of affording a car by buying the car, even if it's a shitty car, it is better to pay for maintenance than it is to pay for the car and get a newer car, but you have to turn it in. It's never yours. Now, if there's like a lease to own, maybe, I don't, like that as an option it, it, it's basically renting a car uh at least to own is basically uh buying a car with a loan for people who have bad credit but yeah um down the street you could buy a house for twenty five thousand. you just don't want to buy it it's a rundown shit hole that reminds me of uh uh what's the youtuber angry cops who literally bought himself a crack house and has been restoring it off of his own sweat labor. And I think that's fantastic. Um, I also think that he has a neighbor who's been a pain in the ass who has been like reporting him. Yeah, this old crack house. Yeah. Uh, I, I love watching the status updates on it. Um, and apparently he's got a neighbor that's been like reporting him to the city planner and shit for things that he's not even doing wrong or that how would you do it right? Like, how are you going to get rid of that much crap out of a crack house without having a roll off? Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> like the house is garbage. We need to put the garbage in the garbage. So the only other, the only options are get a roll off or throw the garbage in the front lawn and then have the roll off there for like an hour and you throw everything from the lawn into the roll off. There's, you have to have something there for the garbage. It's either the garbage or a thing to put the garbage in. You have to have it there. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how you'd figure it out. How, how would you do that? How do you, how do you do that? I'm, I'm just. I don't know why I do this. So I get animated and because, so my camera's up here, right? My microphone is a little off to my right. And for some reason, because 
it's what I'm talking to. Instead of looking at the camera, which is where you're gonna see, I look at the microphone because I'm talking to it. Uh, yeah, he's a drill instructor and uh, does not understand neighborhood politics. Well, it's not just, it's not even about neighborhood politics. I mean, let, take the politics out of it. If you want to have the roll off gone and, and not have the roll off be there in the front yard, then you're going to have a big pile of trash waiting to go into the roll-on. If you don't want the trash, then you have to have the roll-on. If you don't want the roll-off, then you have to have the trash. There's no other way to do it. It's physically impossible to do it any other way. So what do you do? How do you figure that? Yeah, it's the neighbor, it's the neighbor exerting power, yeah. And I mean, obviously they don't actually have that power. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, that AC decides to um, enforce that they don't have that power by using the legal system. I think I, I think that there there are there are too many people that um, people are either under litigious or over litigious. There's nothing in between. There's nobody who's using the legal system correctly. Like, you have people like Rhea and the MPAA that are absolutely egregious abusers of the legal system. YouTube, you know, the way they handle uh, DMCA strikes. It's ridiculous. They just ignore the law. And they, they, they abuse the hell out of the system to do whatever they want. But then you have people like AC who has a legitimate claim that you know this 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 neighbor and the uh neighborhood you know like the neighborhood planners and everything they're absolutely abusing him and they are absolutely abridging his rights but he's not going the legal option and i don't think the legal option is always the best way to wind up but starting the process puts a bullet in the gun which let me be clear i'm not saying go and shoot the neighbor i'm i'm saying that all negotiation is done under threat sometimes that threat is just taking the offer off the table you you want the thing i have the thing and your offer is so insulting that i am no longer going to offer you the thing or um Sometimes it's the threat of violence, the threat of force, like um, the, 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 the government. You pay your taxes because if you don't, the IRS shows up. If the IRS can't get the money out of you, well, then the police show up. And the police showing up is the threat of violence, that there is a gun involved at that point, and you, you have to surrender to the will of the government at that point. So at the end of that chain of events is the threat of force. So the, the implication is that you should do something before then to avoid getting to that option. But having the police there to enforce those rules is what puts the bullet in the gun so you know there is an end game. And I think it's the same thing with AC is that, you know, filing the charge or making the complaint puts a bullet in the gun so that this neighbor knows that they aren't in a position of power, they're just in a position of favor. And there is a huge difference between being in a position of power and a position of favor. It, it will make his life harder, but I think the way that you start, you can't get to a middle ground if the opposing side has no, has no reason to cede any to you. Which means that you need to have a threat of something to get them to negotiate. Otherwise, they're just not going to negotiate. If I'm in a position of favor and I am able to enforce a position of power on you and you're not willing to do anything to stop me, then why would I stop? Why would I give you any ground? I don't need to. You know what I mean? You used to have your ex-wife go and play mediator because you do not negotiate well. Yeah, I, I'm... I can be a good negotiator, and I mean, you've seen that in action, like in, 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 in Karch chat and things like that. I can be a good, I'm a good moderator, 
because I understand that there is a end game. There is a point at which you have to follow the rules or you're gone. But there has to be an or there, or there's no reason to do what 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 is desired. You know? But yeah, I, like, I, I'm a fan of... I, I don't like to get to the point of escalation. So I like to point out that there is an end game. And this is what the end game is. So like, uh, I used to, I used to moderate in a, um, in a chat based roleplay website. So not like voice or streaming, but like IRC, right? And I would have to come in and calm down a situation where people have already started blowing up because, um, our policy was that we don't police, we just restore order. So we wait for something to go wrong for there to be a disruption. That way, even if somebody is breaking the rules, as long as nobody cares, we don't get involved. Because we're just there to keep the peace. Right? So I would have to come in and tell people, hey, you know, talk to me privately. What's going on? I need you to, you know, this is this is what we have to get. We, we have to get to a position where... Uh, where the rules are being followed, where people are being respected. We need to get this back away from the edge where you two are at each other's throats. So what's going on? Talk to me. And as long as they would continue talking to me in private, not causing a bigger problem in the open, I'm happy to sit there and talk. But if they start sniping at each other in the open, I have to say, look, here's the thing. Neither one of us, none of us want this to go any further than it already has. This looks like it's not moving. I mean, this may just be because I'm flying over the desert. Um, but yeah, I, I, so I, I would have to tell them, look, here's the thing. End of the day, you have to stop what is going on right now. Now, you can talk to me and we can get to a point where everyone gets what they want. Or I'm going to have to boot you. And you're not going to be here and you're not going to get what you want. So let's negotiate. Let's let's compromise, okay? What is it that is causing this? What do you need? And usually it winds up fine. I, I wind up calming things down and just getting a conversation going is the important part. But it always it, nobody ever calmed it. I worked that job for 16 years. I never got anybody to calm down until I told them that look if you don't do what i'm asking you to do if you don't talk to me privately if you keep this going in the public i will have to remove you by force nobody listens until that line flies uh, that's why he needs a mediator a non-threatening party usually with guys like him I don't like him right off the bat well yeah he's a di that's what that's his job his whole his whole job description is be an asshole but he, an asshole that winds up with everybody being in a better place at the end of the day. <laughs> he is big and forward. Yes, people hate that and people will do things to undermine him. Yes. All right, you're going to lurk. All right, take care, Tom. Uh, enjoy your food. I appreciate the lurk very much. Um, obviously, I haven't done this in like a year and a half, two years. I'm a little out of practice. So if... Uh, <laughs> If you have any suggestions, if my audio is bad, anything like that, let me know. Hey, Ice for Ice, thank you so much for showing up. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while there, buddy. Um, obviously, as I was just saying, I haven't been doing this for a while. Uh, I'm trying to get back to this. This right here is a stress test to see if my computer can handle it. I can say right now, the house is actually a little cold. Um, and it's, it's a little um, chilly out. But my room, I, I have a fan on me. Uh, in part because I'm wearing this nice fuzzy sweater, which feels really good. But it's warm right now. Uh, but my my room is warm. So, um, my computer is warm, but it's not dying. Uh, I would say that this is not the best frame rate, but it's passable for flight sim. I just wanna make sure that the simulation rate doesn't crash, especially on approach. That's what I'm concerned with. How it goes? 
it's going good, man. Um, my, I, I, I've had a problem with my ankle for about, hmm. <sighs> I think it's been like three months now. And it has prevented me from flying. However, as you can see, we're flying today. The reason it's prevented me from flying is because of my rudder pedals. That requires my feet. Toe brakes require my feet to flex in ways that they don't want to right now. However, um, I was made to kind of work around it and figure out how to make it work because a friend of mine sent me, I'm gonna try and do this very carefully so I don't disrupt the flight. They were kind enough to send me this. This is the Thrustmaster TCA side stick. It is, I, I mean, let's be honest. It's, it's a mid tier flight stick. Um, but it is a very high quality, very high end flight stick that is designed, or not high end, but very high end of the moderate category. Flight stick, it is modeled to look exactly like a um, Airbus side stick. I also have the throttle quadrant that comes with it in the captain pack, together with the flaps lever and the speed brake lever attachments. Altogether, this package costs about $280, and somebody sent it to me. I had no idea it was coming. It just showed up one day, and I had to go through my entire Discord, my phone list, and anybody I had ever talked about this thing with, I had to go, is this you? Because this just showed up at my door, and I have no idea who this is. Um, yeah, it was a gift. And I had no idea it was coming. I had no idea where it came from or what happened. Um, it turns out a friend of mine, um, he goes by Alphadron in uh, Discord. Uh, big shout out to him. Thank you so much for this. Uh, also to Cardinal Zen, he helped, he helped fund it a, a bit. I don't know how much. I don't know how much came from each of them. Uh, I know that there was... It, it, the reason why it became it, it needed funding from card is because the there was a sale going on with Thrustmaster that ends tomorrow I think and there was like a 20% off sale or something like this and they wanted to make sure that they got it before that ended because otherwise it was going to be a lot more expensive um so that's why Card pitched in on it, and and I think he probably would have anyway if he knew that I was looking at this. But this is a, th it's it's almost a three hundred dollar set of controls, and I just, I I I got it, and I couldn't not fly. Like th 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 these are the controls that I've been drooling over since they were first created in like twenty twenty. I've, I've spent two and a half years drooling over these controls i do have some complaints not a lot a few but i i've been drooling so long i i couldn't not fly i had to find a way to make it work i had to find a way to position my rudder pedals so that my my leg could flex that way and i did and i i've flown like 20 flights in the last probably two weeks um it's worth having. It's definitely worth scrutinizing. Exactly. Okay. This is something that I, I, I like to say about any game that I play, anything that I put on stream, anything that I do with my life. I can't love something and ignore all of its problems. You can't do it. Because the only way for the thing that you love to get good, to, to be good, to be better, to get better, is to acknowledge its faults so that they can work on them. Um, now with the TCA throttle quadrant, that's where most of my problems are. So with this throttle quadrant, this here is my flap select or my speed brake. Now my speed brake is on the left side instead of below on this, but that's acceptable. It, there's nothing wrong. That's just position. However, to arm speed brakes, you pull up on this lever. So when it's at zero degrees and it's not the speed brakes are completely retracted. You pull that up, and that means that when the weight on wheels sensors detect that you have weight on the wheels, it will automatically just deploy your speed brakes. It had been very simple to add a little switch for that here on the, the TCA 
um, throttle quadrant, but they didn't. Um, there's also, when you do the flap selector, um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lights in here. I would normally not do this at cruise, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So if you look down here, you see there's this little control here. What that is, and you can see how when I click it, that pulls up, that's a locking mechanism that keeps you from being able to just touch the control and make it flip. And that is, actually no, that is not modeled, or yes it is, okay, there it is. It is modeled on this, but it's static. It doesn't move and it doesn't lock. So I can, I can literally right now just bump that control and it will put flaps out. I don't need to actually pull up on the uh, retention thing here. Ice Rise, thank you so much By for those way, bits. Just because I have some leftover. Thank you so much for giving me your leftovers. You know me. I, I love leftovers. They're so simple and easy to make, and it makes dinner just that much easier. Uh, no, thank you so much, man. Um, you know, I, I, I haven't streamed since April of 20, uh, 2021. And that's that's because my computer died. Well, my my I had a MSI uh, NVIDIA GTX 1080, 1080 Ti, and it died. And I bought a new computer to replace it because I was just going to get a uh, replacement video card, but they wanted either $900 for the same video card, which was like seven or eight years old, or they wanted, I think it was like $1,600 for a more modern video card or i could spend 1500 and get it in a computer get the same video card but so i bought a computer to get the video card but the computer itself was actually better than my old computer in most ways the the, the processor was faster the um the motherboard was better uh, everything was better except the ram it had half the ram so i was like cool i'm just gonna get the computer I'll put the computer down here. I'll take, uh, I'll gut the RAM out of the old computer and I'll put it in this computer and then this computer will be just as good, if not better in most of all ways, if not all ways, than the old one. But then, turns out the, uh, the RAM from the old computer is not compatible with the new motherboard. So here I'm sitting with a much better CPU, much better graphics card, everything. So there was just nothing I could do about that. Uh, and this is my first time trying to stress this. I have bought the replacement RAM. So now it has the same RAM that the old computer had. Um, the And I'm sitting here looking at myself in OBS instead of the camera. I'm terrible at looking at the camera, okay? I'm sorry. I, I hate this about myself, but, uh, you know, I, I'm just bad at this. I will, I will find anything else to look at. I'll sit here and I'll look at the microphone because I'm talking to the microphone. Like, if I start ranting, you'll see me look at the microphone because it, uh, it's what I'm talking to. I don't know. Uh, if I'm calm and I'm just dorking around, I'll look at myself on my OBS preview because, uh, I want to make sure that, like, my hands are staying in frame and that I'm not just going crazy and being outside the window and everything. Like, I want to make sure that everything looks okay and I don't look like more of a dork than I already think I am. But I'm terrible at looking at the, at the, at the camera. Um... And now my stream testing. Yes, um, that's what I'm doing right now is I'm basically seeing how everything works together. I can definitely tell my, my room is hotter than it was. Uh, my, my room is actually hot. I have I have a fan blowing directly on me because I need it. Because I could just change it to a lighter shirt. But being honest right now, uh, my, uh, my closet is blocked by my old bed frame because uh, there was a recall on this bed frame and uh, the welds were snapping. And they sent me a replacement bed frame. I got the replacement bed frame in, but at the time, because of the way that the welds were bent, some of the legs wouldn't fold down with it. I couldn't get it out the door, so it was stuck in my room. I've gotten it 
down, but I can't. I, I need help to get it out of the room, and my like I said, my foot's been screwed up, so I haven't been able to actually move anything. Uh, so that's blocking my uh, closet, which is where all my clothes are. I could have moved it to get to it like I do whenever I'm changing, but uh, it was like it was like 4:45, and I still had to get everything loaded and my flight planned and everything. It was a spur of the moment thing I decided to do, so I just had to, you know, wear what I was wearing. Um, I didn't have time to go and you know rearrange my room so that I could get to my closet again to change into something that was less warm because I knew this was going to heat up my room. Um, but anyway, I can definitely tell that the room is heating up, uh, even without this. I am wearing shorts, but, so I'm wearing this, I'm wearing shorts, um, because that's in my dresser, not in my closet. Anyway, uh, I can tell that it's warmer, but, like, it doesn't feel, like, it doesn't feel like my, my computer is overheating, it's just warm, nice and toasty. So... I think we're okay. Um, I'm going to see what it's like when we get to landing. I will say, if you want to run back to the beginning of the stream, it is hilarious. Everything that could possibly go wrong when I left Denver did. Um, and I think it's all because of icing. I, I, I think my computer, or not my computer, my uh, plane was completely iced over. Um, because I, I needed to run the computer, I needed to run the, the plane for like 10 minutes to get all the ice to melt, but frankly, I didn't have that kind of time. And I'd rather risk crashing than uh, to sit there and not start the flight until an hour into the stream, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I'm also I'm terrible at this because now, instead of looking at the camera, I'm looking over at the chat window to make sure that you haven't said anything back to me. And it's making it so that because I'm trying to uh, communicate with you, that I'm being bad at communicating with you. Uh, I'm terrible at this. I'm so out of practice. I used to do this all the time. Uh, I, I think I did two, two to three streams a week. And now I'm doing this. Um, this is also a longer flight than I would normally do. Uh, both personally and for stream normally what i like to do is two sectors so i'll do two hour and 10 hour and 20 minute flights because that works out to being a total of about three and a half four hours this one's just two and a half hour flight and probably a half an hour of setup <laughs> and um one thing that is slowing me down is the way the flyby wire loads so it actually has uh seating and it simulates a realistic boarding time for the number of passengers that you have being boarded. So that takes like 10 to 15 minutes minimum. Oh no, more long, fl long flights, more opportunities for things to go bad. Okay. So I don't have any um, failures set for simulation. They do have them but I am not, um, I'm not having any of them done. And I don't want to, uh, not yet. <laughs> uh, right now I'm just trying to, to fly the plane because my focus right now is on stream. So there are, there, there is the possibility for failures, but um, we don't simulate those basically ever. Um, and especially right now, uh, hydrate, hydrate. Okay. I'm going to have to be right back. I have my bottle of hydration and I'm going to go fill it and then I will be right back. And I appreciate that because I am talking a lot. My voice is getting a little gravelly and I don't like that, but I wasn't noticing it. So I will be right back. I'm going to grab that and then I will finish my thought. I just need to pull this up. And I need to switch to this and break screen. All right, here we go. Boom.
I remember. Ah, there we go. All right, I am back. Thank you so much. I did need to take a few minutes there to stretch my legs anyway. Um, my uh, <clears throat> my legs do need moving around from time to time. Sitting around in one place for too long is not good for anyone. Not just me, not just streamers. Everyone needs to get up and move around from time to time. And uh, all right, so I've got my water bottle. Thank you so much. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's cold. Man, I love my water cooler. Okay. So, uh, yeah, computer died. Um, I had to spend a lot more time than I anticipated trying to get RAM for it. And then after that, I wasn't really sure. Um, there was... There was some performance problems with X-Plane, and Microsoft Flight Simulator had some serious issues. Yes, everybody needs to touch grass, uh, get in touch with reality. Um, you're just sitting there for a long time is bad for you. Um, but yeah, the so uh, it just took time. Um, Microsoft Flight Simulator needs some time to bake. It was not ready at the time that they released it. Uh, and there was a time where X-Plane was just crashing all the time. I didn't know if that was my RAM or if that was the sim. Um, there kept being reasons why I shouldn't start quite yet. You know, because either I was going to see my wife soon or, you know, traveling, injuries, sickness, that sort of thing. Um... COVID happened, and that kind of kicked my desire to stream in the dick. So instead, I focused on supporting other streamers and content creators and consuming their content. So I feel like that was a decision that I made for me. Um, sorry, just getting an update on where we're at. Um... But yeah, uh, that's a decision that I made for me. And since at the time I didn't have any uh, active subscribers but myself anyway, I decided, fuck it, I I can take a break. I, I can take some time off. And, and, you know, some time off turned into all the time off. <laughs> um, but I do want to get back into it. And I think it's going well. Uh, I do. I think this is, uh, I've kind of been doing the same, did some content creation. What kind of content creation? What have you been doing, man? Are you supporting a bunch of streamers, mostly VTubers? I mean, obviously, I live with one. Um, hold on one second, I'm gonna take a drink first. And let me tell you, it is bananas seeing a real-life anime wife walk through the door. Like, that's just... Uh, you did short videos for the clock app. Oh, I, I gotcha. Mostly cosplay and silly stuff. Man, there's nothing wrong with that. But I am gonna real quick shout out Endearing Chaos because I haven't done that yet this stream. Um, But yeah, the... So... Endearing Chaos lives here with me. Or I live here with her, however you want to say it. Uh, her D is, in fact, small. But yeah, there, there's nothing wrong. Like, don't, don't demean your own work, man. Like, doing anything is... It's more than doing nothing. And... As long as people are consuming the content, what's it matter? You know, if, if people if people are enjoying what you're doing, then what you're doing is good. It, does, it doesn't matter who who is telling you that your work isn't good enough or isn't important enough. You know, who who's out there saying that this content isn't valid? I mean, my like my mom told me video games weren't going to get me anywhere. Here I am making money, you know, letting people watch me play video games. I mean, obviously, this is a simulator, but it's still kind of a game. Uh. You're proud of the stuff you did, just haven't done much lately. Well, 
you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's not the best for the business model, but if you're doing it for personal, you know, for, for feeling accomplished, then it's doing its job. You know, do it when you have the passion for it. Forcing it when you don't will kill the content anyway. By the way, I almost didn't, like, I, 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 I had very little opportunity before everything crashed, like, do this stuff. Like, I'm sorry, I'm pointing the wrong directions because everything's flipped. But, like, all this overlay stuff, I did this myself. This is not something that, like, I paid a group to do. I'm trying to keep my hand in frame. Uh, but all this overlay stuff, I did this myself. Um... But yeah, like, th th you can see there all of my top cheerers, donators, subs. But that, that's all stuff I made. This this up here and the frame around this and the background, like, there behind me. That's all stuff that I made myself. And I was so proud of it. And then my computer tits up and I couldn't do anything. Uh, you did it mostly for fun. You made a lot of friends. So yeah, that, it, it did its job. Like, there's nothing demeaning about that. There's nothing to be, nothing to feel bad about. Let's see, we are 250 nautical miles away from our first restriction, and that means we will need to descend in about 215 miles. But yeah, like, would I like to get to a point where I can supplement my lifestyle with money made from, shall we say, content? Yes. Yes, I would like to get to that point. Am I in that position yet? Hell no. Was I in that position when I stopped? God, no. I I think I've gotten two payouts from Twitch ever. And with Twitch, if you don't reach their payout minimums, it that money is just in a black hole forever. So, this is this is the the the. Listen, uh, we're going to start a brand new segment called ATK Shits on Twitch. Um, and that's not like what it sounds like. I'm, I'm not Nikocado Avocado. I'm not going to sit here and shit myself on camera. I'm I'm going to take a big old steaming pile on Twitch. Okay, because... So Twitch did this thing a while back about talking about how most people who are streaming on Twitch aren't doing it... Who are doing it for money, who, like affiliates. They're just doing it for coffee money. Yeah, here's the problem. If you don't make enough money for, like, 200 coffees... Yeah, okay, 20 coffees. You don't get anything. Yeah, they may be trying to get coffee money. Coffee money for the next year. They don't want to spend... All this time, like... They don't want to sit here and spend hours on end streaming, making assets, having to spend money to make to have those assets made if they don't have those skills themselves, having to spend the time if they do have those skills themselves. They don't want to do all that only to have like only only to make less than they put into it and you know, if they stream for 20 days and make $100 somehow, it make their their disbursement minimums um to have that money then show up and i can get a coffee every day this month that's not why people are streaming on twitch nobody on twitch is streaming for that nobody not anybody nobody has ever streamed on twitch for that 20 starbucks coffees because that makes a big difference i mean it probably does i'm not a coffee person so i, I don't know that's not in my wheelhouse But, um, you know, speak of hydration. Um, but if you don't make those minimums, you get nothing. So, you know, I spend months streaming to get, even, even when I had subscriptions, I would spend months streaming to make enough money to get a disbursement. Uh, I think... It, I, I think I've gotten three disbursements. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I've gotten three disbursements and only once did I get two of them in one year. Um, that's because at my peak, I think I had seven subscribers. And to be clear, 
Daddy Twitch tells you that, you know, we make decent money. We don't. When, when they tell you, oh, a, a subscription is $5 to your favorite streamer. No, it's not. It's it's two fifty. dollars Actually, less than that because taxes, too. Uh, we, get, we get to pay taxes on $5, but we make two fifty dollars and then less the tax. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely bananas. And all of that comes out. In the end, I think I get about $1.80 per sub. Um, the bits is, is better. Uh, you pay for the discrepancy there, but to me, a bit is a penny. So, um, that's easy to tell with people. Streamers can tell you all the time a bit's a penny. That's, that's just how it works. Divide by a hundred, that's how many dollars you just donated. But there's a reason why a lot of streamers are starting to push all of their subscription stuff off-site because Twitch doesn't deserve the money. Because Twitch is abusing our viewers, like you. You're, you've probably had to watch 10 advertisements just to log in to this stream. And it's bananas. I've, I've had to sit there through those things, and I never do. I never sit there. Listen, advertisers. Okay. This is ATK shits on advertisers. Uh, actually, no, I'm, I'm actually uh, fighting for advertisers. Okay. Advertisers, I'm going to be real with you. Nobody's watching your ads. I know you're paying good money to Twitch because Twitch tells you that people are watching your ads. Nobody's watching your ads. What they're doing is they're loading up 10 streams... And they're muting all the tabs. And then they're fucking off while all of your ads play in the background. Nobody's watching them. And then they come back, they sit down, and they unmute one stream at a time until they find one they want to watch. And then they'll mute all the others and either leave their room running or close them depending on whether or not they're looking for the homies. If they're looking for the homies, they'll leave eight of them up because that's how many Twitch will still count you as a viewer for. And they close the rest. That's what they're doing. They're not watching your ads, okay? They're not watching your ads because your ads have gotten so egregious that nobody cares. As a matter of fact, people are avoiding your products because of your ads. Oh, how topical. You get ads now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in chat. Yes, yes, I did say it. <laughs> I, yeah, um, very topical that you would get ads right at that particular moment. You and a buddy here are talking about streaming for funsies, not money. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of people who stream just for fun. But once you get to a point where like you're an affiliate, if you have the capacity to make decent money doing it, you're going to make the decisions that you can to maximize how much money you get from it just doing what you like. I can understand, like me, I'm not going to compromise my having fun with the streaming and the community having fun with my streaming in order to make more money, but I will absolutely maximize the income in every other way. But yeah, um, but yeah, avoiding products that you get ads for on Twitch, absolutely. The only one that I don't is Taco Bell. I, I still go to Taco Bell. Because I like tacos. And not necessarily good like Mexican tacos, but like shitty American tacos. So I still eat Taco Bell. I was always... But, but here's the thing. I was always going to eat Taco Bell. So Taco Bell, stop ad advertising on Twitch. Nobody cares. N nobody cares. We, we all know you exist and we all like you already or hate you. But it's a love-hate relationship. It's like our ex, right? Nobody, nobody plans... Hey, Friday, I think we should go to Taco Bell. Nobody plans that. Just just to be clear, Taco Bell. Taco Bell, you're a booty call. Let's be clear. We get drunk and we call Taco Bell and we say, hey, what are you doing? You want to Netflix and chill? That's how you go to Taco Bell. You don't go to Taco Bell by planning to go to Taco Bell on Tuesdays. That's not how it works. If you're going to have Mexican on Tuesdays, it's Chipotle or, you know, it's Taco Bueno or something like that. It, it you, you do, yeah, Taco Bell is... <laughs> Taco Bell's like Rx, yeah. Um, 
but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to maximize without compromising. Exactly. That, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm going to... Um, you literally cannot become an, an affiliate. That pittance will fuck me out of 220 a month. Really? How? I'm I, I, so I'm just curious. You don't have to like out your situation, um, but like uh, to be fair, like until until you're getting to the point of nearing partner. You're not really making enough money to even report to the IRS. Um, they won't let you a lot of times. Um, I made crap. I've, I've not made crap, and I've never had to report to the IRS because I just I don't make enough. Um, but yeah, you're, you're retired. So I don't know that that would necessarily prevent you, but you, there are end runs. There are ways to work around it, like having a subscribe star or a um, coffee or a Patreon or something like that. I don't like Patreon. I'm just going to put that out there. I don't like Patreon. But uh, YouTube, you know, but but having an affiliate on something like this is different from, because a subscribe star or a coffee or a Patreon, those are things where it's not you selling a product. It's not you being an employee. You're not making a paycheck. You're not earning money. People are donating money. That's a difference. Um, but yeah, you're going to make your money elsewhere. Um, anything I would make on stream, I would invest back in equipment for streaming. Yeah, that's that's what I've done. Like, every dollar that I've made has either gone into my belly or into the stream. Everything. Um, you know, my, my old TCA, or my old... Uh, Thrustmaster flight stick, my uh, tablet. Actually, no, that was a gift. Um, my second monitor, my um, rudder pedals. Like, all of this stuff was all paid for by the stream. Uh, the, the, the green screen that you can see behind... The green screen that I promise is there. Uh, that was paid for by stream. Uh, the webcam that I use was paid for by stream. But, like, I don't go and, and buy other things that aren't stream-related with stream money. That's just not how I do... Where where am I? 164 miles. Okay, we're good. Um, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just... I'm getting paranoid. I mean... <laughs> Was it a gift from one of my followers? No. Uh, the the tablet was a gift from my wife. Um, and to be fair, uh, Alphadron is not just a follower. He's been a friend of mine for years. Um, since before I started... Well, I don't know if it was from before I started streaming. It was before I... I think he was a friend before I started streaming seriously. And I did not meet him through stream. Um, it's considered income, even if what I'm getting is a gainful... It's because there is no actual cap on the upper limits. It would be interpreted like that. Um. Possibly. I don't know. I might have to ask a friend of mine. He, I've got a friend who actually works with the IRS and might be able to answer a question like that. Um. Uh, I can't remember what name he uses, but there's a, they use different names at the IRS. By the way, just so you know, if any, if you talk to anybody at the IRS, uh, they're not telling you their actual names. They're, they're giving you fake names. Just, just so everybody knows. Um, not for any particular reason. It's just a thing that I know. Um. Interpreted as potentially gainful. Yeah. Um, and this is why I say, like, there, there's alternate methods of uh, of monetizing that can possibly end run that. Like, if you're streaming, but you accept PayPal donations. Not even, like, subscriptions, but, like, PayPal donations. That 
is potentially something different. Uh, if you have something like Treat Stream where people can send you food or something like uh, Throne where they can send you gifts, that may be, I, I don't know. Yeah, they are a strip club. They give you fake names, get you worked up, and you, and you always leave feeling like shit. You forgot the part where you get fucked. You forgot the part where you get fucked. It's it, listen. I with the IRS, when the IRS is involved, you're getting fucked. Your only choice is whether or not to enjoy it. Um, really, and and paying for a CPA, you know, pay, paying an accountant, is just like paying a whore, because you're you're not paying. Uh, you're, you're not paying for the sex. You're not paying to get fucked. You're paying for them to go away. You're paying for them to leave you alone. Right? You're paying for the peace of mind of knowing. Knowing. That you're good. That's it. You did some fucking back. That 10000 for the lawyer was money well spent. Hell yeah. Listen. I'm not, I'm not disparaging lawyers at all. They are all bloodthirsty sharks. The thing is, the opposite side is always going to have them, so you need them too. This is what I was saying earlier about being litigious. You need to be, you need to be the right level of litigious. You, you don't want to go to the extremes, but like, you need to be able to do it when it's necessary. To do it when it's time to protect what's yours. Yeah, lawyers are predictable. Like, they, they are a force of nature. They do what they do. They fight and advocate for their client, bar none. I, w I was raised in a household. I mean, there wasn't any lawyers in my house, but my mom worked at a court. So all of her friends were lawyers and judges. So, like, I was raised in that ecosystem. I know exactly what they're like. And yes, they are exactly what you think. Um... And they will absolutely, and they're cut from the same cloth as, as police, just to be clear. They're cut from the same cloth. They're, they're opposite sides of the same coin. Um, the way I like to think about it is basically, a lawyer is a police officer that has to actually know the law, is kind of how I interpret it. Uh, but, I love the law. That's just who I am as a person. I'm going for this dream. So, is there some kind of a time dilation going on? Because so I'm seeing that I've been live for two hours twenty three minutes, and I've been flying for one hour and thirty minutes. My engines have been on for an hour thirty seven minutes. There's no way I spent fifty minutes getting the. Get it, getting the plane set up. There's no way, right? There's no way I spent 50 minutes getting the plane set up. This has got to be dilating. Okay, so... Sorry, I'm... Like I said, this stream is also for me to just troubleshoot and figure out if there's... if this is a possibility. Like, if... if, if the PC is just not strong enough. It's not strong enough, and I'll have to find a way to unbottleneck it, even though it doesn't appear to be bottlenecking anywhere. Like, yeah, sixty percent CPU, fifty percent memory, forty percent GPU. Nothing is redlining, but this is still only rendering so fast. And especially if I start doing a lot of this, it goes bananas and. I think that motion blur is causing an issue, but I can't stop mid-flight to turn it off. And an ex-coworker tell me a former boss had two lawyers tell me his case against me was unwinnable. And each charged him like a thousand dollars consultation. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I've seen it get so much worse. Um, like, I, I, so I am a big fan of r slash and uh, I don't know how many people watch that sort of content but it, it's basically just um 
it, it's basically uh, a guy that goes and reads on YouTube stories that were shared on Reddit. And man, there are some stories about, particularly about malicious compliance, pro revenge, and sometimes even nuclear revenge. Like there was this guy who uh, had an agreement and then his boss went back on it. Uh, he was owed back pay and back overtime. And they tried to renegotiate and, and deal in bad faith. And he talked to a lawyer and the lawyer said that he had a case, right? And the guy says, okay, but so here in this state, the, the statute of limitations for that is seven years. And you said that there's a law that they don't just pay the principal. They also have to pay for a, uh, they have to pay um, interest on any amounts owed over that time when the settlement, when, when the, uh, when the court order goes through. So he said, what if we just waited like six months, six years, 11 months, and then pressed this, this case. And that's what he did. And they wound up owing him instead of like $10,000 of back pay and back, um, back overtime. They wound up having to pay him like, I think it was $16,000. It was a much, much bigger settlement because of it. Uh, I had an ex coworker tell me for. Okay, so I, I read that already. I'm sorry, I, I looked over, I glanced over at my chat and I, I thought I saw it move. But I'm just dumb and wasn't paying attention. Okay, we are 97.7 nautical miles. That sounds like man shorts in the Florida saga. True Florida man stories told as D&D games. That sounds awesome. Um, I also watch another, like a, a gaming channel. I've been falling out of favor with it lately because he's been taking a lot of deals from these shittily built like mobile games. And that, I, I, I'm not a big fan of like the the blank run games where you're just running and going through gates and trying to pick up things and like it, it's one game but they put a thousand skins on it and he gets paid to do all these spots for him where it, it's just framed like a video but he gets paid to do it i'm like eh, i don't like those but when he's doing things like modding games to make it look crazy i love that stuff it's called the uh, gray still plays and he still does some of the other stuff, like he does GTA challenge boards and things like that. And I think it's fun. Um, but he's a, he's a Florida man. He actually owns Florida Man Coffee. <clears throat> um, and yes, he is an actual Florida man. Like when a hurricane went through a couple years ago, he did an actual like drive through his neighborhood, showing the damage and the shuttering and all that. Uh, I think he actually did a short live stream in the middle of the hurricane, which was bananas. But yeah, um, that does that does sound fun. Um, I might have to look that up. You, uh, send me a link. I'm, I'm sitting here like. I'm saying I might have to look that up later. I can't really look it up now, but yeah, but like my Discord still works. You can still send me. <laughs> I'm just I'm just an idiot. Um, but yeah, you can kind of tell. Um, this is why I usually. Uh, this is why I made a point of this actually being fairly uh, a, a longer flight because these long flights yes it's more time for things to go wrong but there's not much that happens at cruise I was saying nice about the Florida Man coffee hurricane <laughs> yeah I figured 
Oh, I, I know. I, I say that I'm being funny. Or I think I'm being funny. But yeah, it's just I'm out of... Yes, more time to talk. That That's a much better way to put it. Um, but especially, I was a little flustered because when I started this flight, uh, I almost crashed because of icing. <laughs> um, if When I'm done, if you want to roll back to like the beginning of the flight, I think it's probably like 30 minutes in. Uh, if, if you can track down when I took off, I, I damn near crashed. I think I was 500 feet off the ground. Um, but it was just because I was so clogged up with ice. I didn't wait enough time for the plane to be ice. And there's no de-icing mechanic in the game, so there's nothing I can do about it. I don't like people when people say that, uh, because I rarely hear idiots say that. You see, that's the thing. I, I actually just heard about this today. I don't remember who said it. Um, yes, I do. Uh, Nathan Hurd, I think. He said that there's a lot of people in this world, and they can all be categorized as either smart or stupid. And I hate. And and and, and he said so. People are either dumb or stupid, and they either know it or they don't. So. Best thing in the world is a smart person who thinks they're stupid because they question everything. Sometimes it sucks because they'll question themselves even when they're actually right. And they're never really sure, but that's kind of a good thing. Uh, and then you can have good fun with somebody who's stupid that knows that they're stupid. Because they're never going to take themselves seriously. They're not going to expect you to take them seriously. Nothing. It's all good. The problem is them two in the middle. It's dumb people who think they're smart. And smart people who think they're who know they're smart, because dumb people who know uh, who think they're smart, they they're dumb enough to cause harm, but they think they're smart enough so they're so they can be certain enough to actually do the harm. And smart people who are dumb will eventually roll the dice on something that they're not right about, and somebody's gonna get hurt. Best thing, the best thing to be is a smart person who thinks they're dumb. I think I'm dumb, so I question everything. <laughs> I, w I want to question everything. I want to think I'm dumb so that uh, when I do think I'm right, I'm sure to be right about it. Um, yeah, Dunning-Kruger effect is a son of a bitch. Um, which is why I say I don't know how to fly a plane. I know the basics. I know the procedures. Uh, I'll also find that moment where I cleared you because I want to clip on what you said about leftovers. <laughs> we cheered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen. Listen. Leftovers are fantastic, man. <laughs> I never said I'm smart, but I find I'm normally surrounded by dumbasses. I think everybody thinks they're surrounded by dumbasses. Um... And most of us are right. <laughs> Earl, look, here's the thing. Think of the average intelligence of a person in your life. Think, think, think of the average American intelligence. Now realize half the people out there are dumber than that. Like, just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, it was a funny comment. Uh, I, I, I don't like laughing at my own jokes, but sometimes I can't help myself. Uh, but yeah, like, average intelligence is great and all, but that means half the country is stupider than that. And you can tell. You can tell. We're not a smart people. Just in general. I'm getting some weird gusts, I think. All right, it's not a problem. Just, I really wish the predictive wind shear system in this plane worked. Okay, that motion blur has got to go. That's got to go. Then, then, as soon as I land, I'm taking that off. Generally, no. If we were smarter, we could accomplish more and cooperate better. Yeah. Um. Now, that's not to say that competition isn't a good thing. Competition is absolutely a good thing. 
Uh, cooperation drives mediocrity. It, it, it eliminates... Cooperation eliminates the worst outcomes. But competition eliminates mediocre outcomes. Competition drives excellence. If that makes sense. At least, that's my opinion. Is that competition drives excellence. And cooperation drives mediocrity. And idiocy is sure to self-destruct. Get some popcorn. Uh, yeah, both have their place. Yes. You need to be able to cooperate in order to, to, to... You need to be able to cooperate if you're going to expect to compete. You can't compete alone. Nobody can. This is absolutely ridiculous to believe. I could not... Like... This channel is not great, but I could not have made it even as it is without cooperation from other people, including those of you here watching right now. I, I, literally, I would just be streaming to myself, and I would not have anything to talk about. I've been in the air for goddamn hour and 45 minutes, and it would have been absolute silence without you guys here. But... But competition also has its place. You, you can't just have everybody going along to get along because that's how you wind up letting the idiots run the board. Because there's more idiots than there are brilliant people. You don't run artists a lot. If you ask them, they are the smartest, most open-minded and accepting people and anyone who disagrees with them is obviously stupid and should be eliminated from the gene pool. Yeah. Um, I don't know that that's exclusive to artists. Fuck, my mic just turned off. <laughs> I don't know that that's exclusive to artists and, and to... <laughs> we actually have something to do, folks. Okay, so I'm going to pan you down here. Somebody do me a favor and type exclamation point metar, M-E-T-A-R space KSFO. Somebody do, do me that favor real quick. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to initialization, wind temp, and we are going to go to our descent and request our winds. Perfect. And then performance. We are all awesome. We are. I wouldn't say everyone is. There, there's some there's some pretty awful people out there. Um, I could name some names, but I'm not going to. Exclamation point. M-E-T-A-R. Mike Echo. Tango Echo. Romeo. Space. Kilo. Sierra. Foxtrot. Oscar. So the trans out is going to be 18,000, as always in the United States, because that's just how we do. Uh, space. Or pardon me, I, I said it wrong. It's, it's M-E-T-A-R. I'm an idiot. I, I'm not an idiot, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of an idiot. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Mike, Echo, Tango, Alpha. Romeo. Space. Yeah. Just need the space. And we're good. Um, I'm going to assume it's got a radio altimeter of 300. No meds are available. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to look here real quick. Come on. Alright, so it's 3014. And temp is 11 sorry um i'll show you what what the metar i'm showing you what the metar is you can see it right right here uh where it says ksfo that's the metar and i'm trying to decode it in my head it's 280 at 10 knots I'm sitting there because I'm looking at the McDo. I'm thinking you're looking at the McDo. Took three tries. I got brain damage, and I'm used to making mistakes like that. That's not, that's that's not your mistakes, man. I, 
Like, I misspelled it. I'm reading it out to you, and I'm like, you know, Mike Echo Tango Echo Romeo. Wait. No. Tango Alpha Romeo. It's not exclamation point meter. Metar. Okay, so progress. Oh, dear. Okay, we need to get down now. Stat. So we're going to come down to 27,000. I'm going to pull speed brakes half. And we're going to dive bomb a bit. Um, so landing elevation is auto. Uh, make do arrivals and performance approach is completed. Uh, top of descent winds has been requested. Uh, speed brake is in. Altimeter, we will set when crossing 18,000. Um, let's see. Our next checkpoint is lane at 24,000. I'm going to go ahead and pause to go down there. Um, more for talk to text. This would take me twice as long to say and it'd be full of spelling here. Oh, wow. You're using text to speech? Or speech to text? Wow. I did not expect that. So are you on mobile or something? Uh, uh, we're in the same boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, this is where it, this is going to start getting to being a very active situation. Um, let's see if I can get us to 16.5 flows. Currently, I'm on mobile. When I first came in, you were on Xbox. On Xbox! Man! I haven't had an Xbox in years. I mean, I have one somewhere. Probably. I don't know where it is, but I have one, I think. But it's like an Xbox 360 or something. I think that's the newest one I have. Um, I know one of my roommates has one in the other room, but uh, I don't think it's one of the newest ones. I'm not sure. I just... I fell out of love with console gaming. It's just too restrictive. Uh, we are a lot closer than I thought we were. Uh, but we're, we're going to try and fly this thing like a brick. Yeah, we're, we're descending at almost 4,000 feet per minute. 4,000 feet per minute. This You would definitely feel this. I do like PCs, I just like games a lot, and Xbox has a lot of the games I like to play. Well, that's the beauty of Windows, is that um, they're trying... I don't know how successful they're being, but they are trying to get it so that every Xbox game will also play on Windows, because Windows is basically using the same operating system as Xbox. That's the objective. I don't know how well they're doing at it, but they're... Listen, an, an, an attempt is being made. Let's see, I am absolutely busting this 24,000. There's no way. But I am getting back onto my glide path better. So, it's not all bad. Yeah, I absolutely prefer my PC. Um, there was something to be said. If you had the money to do it, you'd have both. That's fair. If I had the money to do it, I'd probably have both. I'll, I will tell you that what I would probably have is a Switch, not an Xbox. Uh, and that's just because there are a couple of games that I want to play that are not available on PC. And, like, all of them are on Switch. So... That's, that's what I would probably do. I also have a landing rate monitor. Um, I can't show it to you, but I will tell you afterwards what it says. It should be fairly close to what Sim Toolkit Pro says, which is, by the way, um, as we're coming into land, if you want to type exclamation point predict, you can attempt to predict my um, landing rate. So, exclamation point predict, and then whatever you think 
uh, my landing rate is going to be, it will be a negative feet per minute. So you would say like exclamation point predict space minus 250. Um, I don't know exactly what it does. This is, this is a new bot for me that does these things. So uh, it should tell us who got the closest, I think. I don't really have anything that I can give for that. So you're predicting 125. That, if I nail that, that will be the best landing I have ever done. Not by a lot. Um, I had... Just a couple days ago, I had a... No, it was just yesterday. I had a landing that was 132. And that was considered a perfect landing. So, negative 125, that's... that. I hope so. I hope you're right. And it is in the realm of possibility. I have been doing a lot of practice. Okay, so... Where are we trying to get? I'm going to turn on constraints. What am I looking for? Here. Uh, and we are currently 2 9 or 6 1. Which is 1 0 3. Okay, we're at a constraint, which means I should be able to pull my speed brakes back. Perfect. We're back on course, folks. All right. Altimeter is set. Landing lights will come on at 10,000 or just under. Uh, landing system as required. We're not quite that far yet. Actually, we're, we're getting there. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. There's no reason not to. All right. Landing lights. We're still 6,000 feet too high for that. I hope you're right, too. Yeah. Um... That would be fantastic to, to actually get that kind of landing. Um, I have not... I, I've gotten a landing that low before in my Tolis, I think. I'd have to open up Excel, and I'm not opening up Excel, so... Um, so this is the best we're getting. <laughs> I have had as bad as, like, 420... That, that that's the worst one I've gotten recently. Since I got landing rate monitor, that's the uh, the worst landing I've had was 420 feet per minute. Um, landed with 1.26 Gs, which it would it would feel like somebody threw you on a bed. It's rough. That's a bad landing. It's what the, the the landing rate monitor can classified it as concerning. Worst lady you've got just happens to be in a <laughs> stoner is like that gives me giggle. Yeah, I know. I know. And I'm not even lying. It's legitimately, literally bang on 420. 420 with 1.27 Gs of landing rate. Um, I was going 120 knots with a 5 degree up pitch angle. Less than a degree of roll. And I was flying this plane. Alright, uh, and I just made that close, and I didn't mean to. Alright, so the rad nav is set. We are... Why, why are we constrained at six? Oh! Balls! Let's get down to seven. That's my bad. Okay, so we need to be under 12,000. 10 nautical miles. Nope. I need speed brakes again. I would be much better at this if I had had time to brief all my charts, but I didn't. I was just doing this for the moment. I'm thinking about actually getting my pilot's license in my old age adrenaline is becoming less and less. Listen, 
a pilot's license is a fantastic and freeing thing. Um, I would absolutely recommend it. It is not as hard as people think. Um, I haven't done it myself. I would love to. I need to lose weight first. And that's something I am working on. I have been doing uh, better. I have been losing weight consistently since COVID started. Oh, we're going to bust. There's no way I'm getting down to 12,000. Especially not with it deciding to lower my speed to 250 knots. Yeah, yeah, it is awesome. I think I've lost like 30, 33 pounds or something like that. I'm proud of myself for that. Um, I remember when I lived close to you, we talked about doing it together at one point. Fly yeah, and I, I would love to. Um, I don't know that... I don't know if it'll happen. I do want it to, but it, it is an expensive hobby. Your weight loss is 90% diet, 10% exercise. Yes, and and that's what I've been trying to focus on, is is the, uh, is the diet. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm focusing on my constraints here. And we're slowing down again because somehow we got oversped. I'm not sure how that happened. Okay, we're low enough I can turn on my landing lights. And we can tell the passengers to go ahead and sit their asses down because we're coming into land. Speed is in manage mode, speed brakes is as required because we actually do require them at the moment. Um, I don't think there's anything else we can do right at this moment. Okay, now we're gonna slow down again because that's exactly what I need is slowing down. I mean, I, I need that too, but you go down to, why are you going down to 10? Okay, never mind. to be above 8,000. Okay, 230 knots, speed checked, flaps one. ahead and clear it down to 3,100. So I apologize if, I, if, if I'm not responding as quickly as I would like to, but this is a very active part of the flight. Um, and I am trying to keep an eye on chat, but flying the plane comes first. Okay, crossing 9,000. Not above the glide slope, I'm pretty sure. I wasted a lot of fuel by coming in too high and too fast. And my mic do shut down again. So I need to direct to... Email. All right, speed check, flaps two. Let's put in approach mode. AP2 activate. Okay, speed check, flaps three.
started that about 15 years ago, and I'm still on it in some semblance. I found what my body likes and runs on well, and I eat accordingly. Exactly. Exactly. All the, all the fad diets, they don't work. The only thing that can tell you what your body is made to run off of is your body. Okay, let's... Bring in my spoilers, but I'm gonna arm them. Okay, perfect. Um, let me take a look real quick. This is 11,000 feet. We got plenty of space. So I'm just going to set low break and see that right here where it says break low. drop my gear be checked flaps full let's light this bitch up part where I'm not quite ready to go visual but the results are usually temporary with those yes exactly you need lots of simple carbs with minimal fat I mean ADHD is fucking always in motion even when sitting see yeah and that's the thing it's because we all live different it means that we also all move different and the fact that we're moving different means that we take different nutrition what we're doing determines what we need to do people uh, it's, it's entirely possible that people who do a lot of thinking need more fat in their diets because the brain is like 85 percent fat i think like it's bananas it's mostly fat so to establish new neurons and everything you need fat so a high fat diet is good for a very cerebral minded person Let's bring this in a little closer. We're about 10 miles out, maybe 12. And see, speed under speed, I don't have my speed brake, my auto brake. So I have to reset that. Come on. Break low. Ah, 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 ah. Plane. Do what I tell you. All right. So we're landing two eight left. So we are aiming for this runway right here. Just making sure that it's lined up. It was weird with X-Plane, sometimes uh, my cursor on my screen would be different from where it is on stream. I still have no idea why. Okay, so we've blown through to the descent. And I'm not sure why. I'm going to take control of the plane. And I'm going to turn this over to LS.
I don't know why my vertical indicator is going off. But we're going to descend and I'm going to use the Pappy. So at this point, I'm visual. I'm only occasionally glancing down at my instruments. Most of what I'm watching is the runway. And I'm looking for these uh, indicators on the side of the runway. The Pappy or Vassy lights. They definitely need to come down. Got a straight headwind, which is perfect. I feel like there's some sim rate lag going on. Gear down. Just checking. I think this is actually my first landing at SFO. Getting some ASIM. I'm very low. I definitely feel like there's got to be some sim rate lag here. I'm definitely ignoring my my instruments. Okay, reverse thrust, lower the nose, 100 knots, 80 knots, stow reversers, manual braking, okay, I'm going to vacate left. Just 
stowing my flaps. Disarming my spoilers. I didn't get to see what my landing rate is yet. Give me one second to stop here. I'll set my parking brake for the moment. While I reconfigure the aircraft, normally I would have a second person here. That'd be helping me do all this stuff without taking my eyes off the plane. Any lights retracted, ground spoilers are disarmed, engine mode is normal, flaps are retracted. Let's go ahead and turn the APU master on. Uh, what is brake temperature? Oh, that's not bad. We don't need anything for that. Flap open. Go ahead and start the APU. All right. Let's go ahead and get our way to the gate. Get our breakaway. I'm going to real quick, I'm going to be unable to see chat for a minute here oh perfect we're right here by the gates taxiing bravo to the ramp go ahead and turn in here Ooh, turning a bit spicy Uh, I'm going to ignore a lot of this ground clutter. Um, Microsoft decided to uh, go a little bananas with it. Slow down a bit as we turn. Come on. Keep moving. Keep moving. Normally we'd have a marshaler here to tell us when to stop. I think right about there is going to be just about perfect. Let's double check my work because we don't have that marshaler. So I don't think it's unfair to uh, marshal ourselves. So we, we need to go a lot further. That is not the direction I wanted to move that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and set our parking brake. Parking brake pressure is good. Uh, Anti-ice is off already. APU bleed can come on. Engine 1 and 2 master can shut down. Runway turnoffs are off. Nose wheel light can come completely off. Wing lights can come off, beacon can come off, seat belts off, lapse time stop, and we can go ahead and start deboarding the aircraft. To do that, I just come in here and I plug in zero passengers. And then tell them to get the hell off my plane, and I just made it instant. And that was not what I wanted to do. <sighs> Oh, you glorious bastard. Let's go ahead and connect the jet bridge anyway. And then I'm going to turn on chat. No, no, that's not what I meant to turn on. Uh, landed at 205. Not bad. Um, can you just dump a nuke on it rather than land? No, God, I wish. Uh, okay, so landing rate monitor says I had 208. Very similar. Um, it tells me my bank was two degrees, my pitch was four degrees up, wind speed was 10 knots, and I landed with 0.98 Gs. That is a perfect landing. It's not as good as uh, Ice for Eyes was anticipating, but hey, it's something. 
All right, so let me check off everything I've done already. Oh, I need to stop this. This is supposed to turn off with the weight on wheels, but for some reason it doesn't. I don't know why. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off our fuel pumps. All six. Transponder can come off. Uh, brake fan is already off. All right, and since we instantly deboarded the aircraft, I can go ahead and finish shutdown procedures by turning off my adheres. External lights can all come off. Uh, HPU bleed can come off, APU master off, emergency exit lights and no smoking off, and battery one and two can come off. And there we go. That's how you start up and shut down a jet. That's that's our flight today. My first stream in like a year and a half. And here we are at San Francisco. Terrible place, but you know, it is what it is. And that was actually a fun flight. So um, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, I think we handled it mostly okay. Um, I'm gonna have to shut down the whole motion blur thing. But uh, aside from that, I think that was a very su successful test stream. Uh, if you guys have any feedback for me, please hit me up in Discord. Please, 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 please hit me up in Discord. If there's anything that needs changing, especially uh, audio or the visuals, anything, anything you can think of, anything you want to be able to do, let me know. If you have any suggestions, hit me up in either my Discord, which you can find here, or um, just in my DMs, because I think both of you have me uh, added as a friend. So, yeah. Any case, thank you so much for being here, guys. And I will see you guys later. Um, thank you so much.